Hey, what's up, everybody? So this is uh, the EPS Classic uh, Tip and Trick Number Two. So this is uh, concerns recording stuff into your DAW. Basically, the final step of the process. There's a couple of ways to go about it. Of course, if you do all your sequencing in your DAW, then of course you can just mute the tracks, set up some uh, audio tracks and uh, record each track separately as you go along, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I have uh, these two tracks already recorded, and I'm gonna throw in this third track. You can see I don't want any of this MIDI information sent to the EPS, so I've muted those tracks out, and this is just the triangle percussion, uh, triangle percussion portion here. So I'm just gonna set that up, it's gonna start recording. And, uh, you know, so that's definitely a way to sort of stem out your, to stem out your, your ideas. You know, I have the, uh, the chops on one track, then I have the drums on the other track, then I have this triangle part on the third track. Okay, so the second way to record your, your uh, EPS into your DAW, say that you didn't have the benefit of sequencing your EPS in the DAW, and you only did the sequencing internally on the EPS. Cool, cool, cool. There's a quick workaround to separate your tracks, so long as you remember to set up different layers here. So I have all my chops on one layer, and I have all of my percussion Oh, wait, uh, uh, oh, oh, because I already have that layer muted. So I have all of my percussion on a separate layer here. So, right? So this is how you would set it up to do that. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is set your uh, internal sequencer to clock to, to MIDI, right? To an external device. So what I have over here is I have MIDI clock sending out from my DAW. Awesome, all right. So of course I have a MIDI connection from my interface to the input over here. Awesome. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is go to edit, sequence, clock source, scroll over until you get, I think you're gonna end up like here. Uh, you're gonna scroll over until you get to clock source. It's gonna say internal, just switch it over to MIDI. Awesome. So now you're set to receive uh, the, the, the EPS is going to play when you hit play over here. Perfect. The next thing you want to do here is go to edit instrument and now you have your two different layers here. And, and the only reason I'm showing you this whole tutorial in the first place is because you need to understand layers in order for me to give you a f more tips and tricks here. So this is possibly the easiest uh, layer manipulation that you can do here. Um, so, yeah, we only want to record the, the sample chops on this one particular track, and then on the next track, we're going to record all the percussion here. So, let's mute this by just arrowing down over here and getting rid of that. So now, if we hit record, we're going to hear just the, just the chops, right? So, uh, normally, I think... I think right about now was when the uh, percussion loop would happen here, right? Yeah, right now. So anyways, let's just get rid of that. Uh, let's add another track. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Audio, cool. Let's not do that. Let's go to the input over here is two. And so now I want to record just the percussion, right? So let's go back over here and let's hit record and Oh, okay, cool. We're hearing it back. So yeah, now we're going to hear just the percussion whenever that happens. I think it's going to happen right now. So yeah, that's how that works out. So remember, just uh, mute your, your, your layers, right? So then you can separate your tracks when you bounce everything down into the DAW. And this, like I said, this only works if you've done all your sequencing already in the EPS. All right, I hope this helps somebody. Peace, more, uh, more tips and tricks and tutorials to come. I just wanted to hip y'all to, to what layers are.
<laughs> and then we'll get really in depth with layers uh, later on. All right, peace.